The big new thing really uh, with, with these features was that I was um, casting other people to play all the other parts, you know, that I wasn't playing all the parts myself, which was like, you know, kind of a great relief and that I could cast like really, people who were like really good at it. And um, I mean, how I do it, a lot of it is just not thinking about it because frankly, it's not really possible on this budget level, you know, like, because, the, you know, like I shot my last movie in 21 days, so there's not time to look at every single take that you're in, you know? So my first film was shot in 24 days. Uh, my uh, most recent one, The Future, was shot in 21 days. Um, so there's not time uh, to be super precious about um, my performance. I mean, I, I look back at playback, usually when I can't see the other actor in the scene, you know, like if they're behind me or I'm, I'm not looking at them, because I, I have to know, like, did they, what did they just do, you know? Um, if it's just me, I can usually know if it was good enough or not. And sometimes we just have to keep moving, you know, like there's a little bit of just, <laughs> uh, like a, a risk taken, you know, but I guess from years of, of, of that being the way that I work, um, it, it doesn't feel that scary. Um, and I think the comfort I get from being in it and from doing it like my way, you know, um, uh, it, is probably worth it because it makes me more confident. You live next door to me. No, I don't. I saw you moving in. You have a white dad and a big brother. Your whole family lives in one of those little apartments. Do you all have to sleep in the same bed? My mom lives somewhere else. You should get a hide-a-bed. During the day, it's a couch, but at night, it folds out into a comfortable, queen-sized bed. Well, the parts I write for children, I think, are it's not that I'm really thinking that much about when I was a kid or kids I know. It's kind of more like I'm being like myself um, in a really like un, you know, it's like once you're an adult, you learn all these kind of indirect ways to say things. And so when I'm right, the kids parts, I just don't do that. I just kind of say the thing and think of like, what's the kind of flattest way to say this. And it's not so much that I'm thinking what's a kid-like way. It's just like you get to kind of be realer than you than would really make sense with an adult. With an adult, it would kind of be like, like slightly off or something. Um, and then directing them, I'm probably more confident directing kids uh, because I think on some level, I have to admit it's because you don't really think they're judging you. <laughs> And, and actors are complicated, myself included. I mean, they're like, you know, they're, they're wanting reassurance um, and they're trying to figure out if you know what you're doing and, or, or you think they are, or whatever. You know, there's a whole lot that can kind of trip you up. But with kids, it's just, uh, I think I'm, I'm the way I probably should be with all the adults, which is also very, um, like I want to take care of them, you know, and I, I really give them a lot of praise and, and they frankly are always blowing me away. So in a way the kids, I think the kids also help me direct the adults because I have this example of like my better self um, on hand, you know, and then, and frankly also you can do a lot of stuff that an adult wouldn't stand for, like give a ton of line readings. Um, you know, just say the line exactly how you want it said, and then they say it back to you, and um, sort of like whatever works. But you know, a lot of adult actors would be find that so insulting or limiting. Although I do that too. With it, I mean, I think it, with Twenty One Days, you kind of like can't. It, sometimes it can't be like a wonderful cathartic experience. You know, it's kind of like that point in a relationship. You know, where you suddenly realize it's not gonna last forever. You know, you can see the end in sight. Yeah, but we're not even there yet. We're still at the good part. We're not even sick of each other yet. <laughs> I'm not sick of you at all. With me and you and everyone we know, I didn't, I didn't really rehearse. I, I think I ran through it the, 
the scenes kind of once with everyone just to make sure they even knew what happened in the scene but that was it uh it wasn't more than like you know a few hours once with each person um i think that was mostly because i had no idea what one would do in rehearsal so i just skipped it i was just like that's just more awkwardness before we've even begun pa pa that's what they called me and they called each other sophie and jason hi we're here for an adoption we can't release him until this comes off he has about a month to go the woman that was here before said that he only had six months left if he bonds with you he could easily hang on five years We'll be 40 in five years. Uh, 40 is basically 50, and then... That's it for us. God, I always thought I'd be smarter. So when I was editing Me and You and Everyone We Know, I was actually in a pretty dark place. I was going through a breakup, and, you know, here I was editing this kind of hopeful comedy, basically. Um, and kind of going into the other room and crying every now and then. And I remember thinking, if I could get this feeling, this this sad, dark, fucked up feeling into a movie, now that would be really satisfying. And uh, and so that, like, I stuck to that for sure. And I, I wanted I wanted this movie. You know, I knew it'd still have humor and surprise and stuff, but that ultimately it would be willing to be sad too um, and that there'd be a, um, some pain that wasn't funny also in it and the first I think the first image was someone I thought it would be me at the time someone stopping time physically uh, out of heartbreak <laughs> is 30 days. If we were dying in a month, we would definitely reprioritize. Right. So the internet's gonna be turned off in the next hour. So the second you get in the door, you'll wanna look up anything you need to look up. So when I was um, writing the movie and I I'd kind of established Sophie and Jason, and I knew they were sort of necessarily self-involved, kind of a little blind. And, um, and I think I was just writing and got kind of sick of them. Um, and just wanted to write a character just even for just that day that was totally clear and open in a way like the, the kids were in the, in the first movie. But I knew it wasn't a kid. I didn't know what it, what it was though, actually, when I started writing it. Um, I was just writing from the feeling. It was kind of like a, a writing exercise that day. I was interested in a character who had a job that was in her field of interest. Um, she's a dance teacher for little kids, but it wasn't exactly what she wanted to do. And dance seemed kind of intriguing to me. I'm not a dancer at all, but I'm, I, I like to dance like at a party. And I knew that kind of my own physical willingness um, was maybe a good visual thing, you know, like art's kind of tricky in movies and dance kind of is, sort of an in-between thing. It's like no one really, there's sort of popular dance and girls dancing on YouTube. And, and I don't know, I sort of wanted to exist in this kind of in-between territory where she didn't have to be super sophisticated um, about her art. <laughs> in some ways, this movie was, was easier in the sense that, uh, easier to get financed in the sense that everyone we ultimately ended up working with were people we knew from the first movie um, and there was definitely no question of like would I get final cut or you know these were people who wanted my thing so it's all European financed I mean we we couldn't find one cent in America for this movie um, and thank God uh, there's still some uh, regard for like the kind of auteur thing, you know, in, in Europe, which doesn't, no one really gives a shit about in the U.S., you know. I mean, I know I'll make a third film, um, but, you know, because I work in all these other mediums, I have to sort of rotate, and now is the time for fiction, yeah. So I don't, ha I mean, I never strike while the iron's hot. I never, I never have.
I take your coat. It's um, kind of part of my outfit. to tell you something. What? Um, one thing is that I'm wild. It can be very hard in the beginning. We didn't have those kind of problems in the beginning. Well, the thing is, you're just in the middle of the beginning right now. 